Good day or evening, dear participants. In this third lecture of Module 5, we are going to focus on the development of assessment criteria and rating scale for rubrics. Let us introduce this topic. Assessment criteria are used as a benchmark or a set of standards to measure the level of a student's work. The issue of focusing heavily on assessments without interlinking them to learning outcomes means that there is a disconnection between actual learning and assessment. Clear learning goals enhance student performance by clarifying the link between knowledge and assessment practices. Research has shown that when people set realistic and specific goals, they are more likely to work harder to achieve them. If teachers want their students to be motivated to work harder, they need to ensure that they set realistic and specific goals. At the assessment level, these goals are referred to as assessment criteria. Assessment criteria mean the clear and transparent expression of requirements against which the student's performance is assessed, as derived from the learning outcomes. Simple question, what is a purpose of criteria? Assessment criteria provide students with information about the qualities, characteristics, and aspects of an assessment task that will be used to measure their attainment of each of the learning outcomes. Criteria make it clear to students what factors will be taken into account when making judgments about their performance. It could be argued that the most direct way students experience what is needed to achieve the unit's learning outcomes is through the assessment criteria. Let us see how to develop assessment criteria. Good assessment criteria are 1. Clear and easy to understand as a guide for students. 2. Attainable rather than beyond students' grasp in the current place in the course. 3. Significant in terms of the learning students should demonstrate. 4. Relevant in that they assess student learning toward course objectives related to that one assessment. In addition, developing assessment criteria involves grading criteria as well. Take note that grading criteria are the standards or expectations that teachers use to evaluate students' performance in an assessment. Grading criteria can be expressed as rubrics, checklists, rating scales, descriptors, or guidelines that describe the quality of work required for each grade or mark. Grading criteria can be applied to different types of assessments, such as essays, presentations, projects, tests, or portfolios. Take note that that grading criteria are important for both students and teachers because they also one provide clear and consistent feedback on students' strengths and areas for improvement. Two, help students understand the learning objectives and expectations of the assessment. Three, encourage students to reflect on their own work and set goals for improvement. Four, support teachers in making fair and reliable judgments of students' performance. Five. Enhance the validity and reliability of the assessment. 6. Promote transparency and accountability in the assessment process. Therefore, to create grading criteria, consider the following questions. 1. What is the most significant content or knowledge students should be able to demonstrate understanding of at this point in the course? 2. What specific skills techniques or applications should students be able to use to demonstrate using at this point in the course? 3. What secondary skills or practices are important for students to demonstrate in this assessment? For example, critical thinking, public speaking skills, or writing as well as more abstract concepts such as completeness, creativity, precision, or problem-solving abilities. Four. Do the criteria align with the objectives for both the assessment and the course? Once the teacher has developed some ideas about the assessment's grading criteria, double-check to make sure the criteria are observable, measurable, significant, and distinct from each other. It is also important to decide on a rating scale. In fact, deciding what scale a teacher will use for an assessment depends on the type of learning he, she wants students to demonstrate and the type of feedback she, he wants to give students on a particular assignment or test. For example, for an introductory lab report early in the semester, a teacher might not be as concerned with advanced levels of precision as much as correct displays of data and the tone of the report. Therefore, grading heavily on copy editing or advanced analysis would not be appropriate. The criteria would likely be more rigorous by the end of the semester as a teacher builds up to the advanced level she, he wants students to reach in the course. 
Rating scales turn the defined grading criteria into levels of performance expectations for the students that can then be interpreted as a letter, number, or level. Common rating scales include First, the letters A, B, C, etc., with or without plus and minus. Second, 100-point scale with defined cutoff for a letter grade if desired. Exarch, a letter B is between 89 and 80, or a letter B followed by plus sign is between 89 and 87, B, A, earned between 86 and 83, or the letter B followed by the sign minus is between 82 and 80. Third, yes or no, present or not present if the rubric is a checklist of items students must show. Fourth, A3 or 5 category holistic scale such as 1. Below expectations meets expectations, exceeds expectations. 2. Not demonstrated, poor, average, good, excellent. Once the teacher has decided on a scale for the type of assignment and the learning, she, he wants students to demonstrate. Such a teacher can use the scale to clearly articulate what each level of performance looks like, such as defining what A, B, C, etc. level work would look like for each grading criteria. What would distinguish a student who earns a B from one who earns a C? What would distinguish a student who excelled in demonstrating the use of a tool from a student who clearly was not familiar with it? These distinctions have to be written out in descriptive notes or brief paragraphs. Now let us discuss the concept of creating rubrics. As you may be already aware, rubrics are very important in assessments. A rubric is an assessment tool for communicating expectations of quality. Students do their best work when they know what's expected of them and how they'll be marked. Whether you're assigning a cooperative learning project or an independent study unit, a rubric communicates clear success criteria to students and helps teachers maintain consistent grading. A well-crafted rubric lets multiple teachers grade the same assignment and arrive at the same score. It's an important part of assessments for learning and assessments of learning and teaches students to take responsibility for the quality of their work. Rubrics are typically comprised of rows and columns where, one, rows are used to define the various criteria being used to assess an assignment. Two, columns are used to define levels of performance for each criterion. Rubrics are generally something that makes the life of a teacher easier. Rather than adding an arbitrary grade to an assignment, with rubrics teachers can determine exactly where a student's work excelled beyond expectations and exactly where it lacked quality. This aspect reflects the farness in assessment. Although they are highly valuable tools, creating rubrics can be a difficult and time-consuming process. Rubrics can be set up as non-scoring rubrics, which allows for assessment-based and outcome-based grading without points. Why do we need rubrics? Rubrics can make grading more effective in this way. 1. Provide students with more complete and targeted feedback. 2. Make grading more timely by enabling the provision of feedback soon after an assignment is submitted trying presented. 3. Standardize assessment criteria among those assigning, assessing the same assignment. Four. Facilitate peer evaluation of early drafts of assignments. In addition, rubrics can help student learning in this way. 1. A teacher has to convey his, her expectations about the assignment through a classroom discussion of the rubric before the beginning of the assignment. 2. Level the playing field by clarifying academic expectations and assignments so that all students understand regardless of their educational backgrounds, e.g., Define what expected analysis, critical thinking, or even introductions conclusions should include. 3. Promote student independence and motivation by enabling self-assessment. 4. Prepare students to use detailed feedback. In addition, rubrics have other uses such as 1. Track the development of student skills over several assignments. 2. Facilitate communication with others. 3. Refine your own teaching skills e.g. by responding to common areas of weaknesses and feedback on how well teaching strategies are working in preparing students for their assignments. Create some time and follow this video showing how to create a rubric for assessment. The video is located on YouTube and the link is displayed on this slide. Let us reflect. We discussed important aspects of assessment criteria, such as what is the purpose of criteria, how to develop assessment criteria, why grading criteria are important, why decide on a rating scale, creating rubrics, and why a rubric is important.
As you can notice, we acquired a certain number of knowledges. Now, what questions should we start asking ourselves? What comes to my immediate thinking is, one, which of the following three assignments requires the use of a rubric? A, a welding project, using appropriate design and materials to weld the common joints. B, multiple choice questions on an exam. C, students self-report on their experience with service learning. Two, in your own opinion, how can grading criteria promote transparency and accountability in the assessment process? Now, reflect in writing on these two questions using the Gibbs Reflective Cycle Guide, which will be shared with you in this module. Compile your reflection in the e-journal available within the e-learning platform in use in this self-paced online course. Share your reflections with your colleagues at work and also share them on the Community of Practice platform, which will be shared with you. To conclude this lecture, we have learned about the development of assessment criteria and rating scales for rubrics and how they can enhance the quality and validity of student assessment. We have also seen some examples of rubrics and how to create them for different types of assignments. We have discussed the benefits of rubrics for both students and teachers, as well as for communication and reflection purposes. Finally, we have posed some questions for you to reflect on your own understanding and practice of assessment criteria and rubrics. If you have any questions or challenges with any of the concepts discussed in this lecture, please use the discussion forum of Module 5 under Lecture 3 to ask questions and answer other participants' questions as well. Thank you for your attention.